That's Herb Hogan climbing the stairs of Founders Hall on his way to work. Most of his professional life he has done what he loves to do and what he does extremely well, teach. Herb joined the Laverne faculty in 1946 and over the years he has proven to be an outstanding scholar, a friend to students, and a trustworthy colleague. In over 40 years of service, Herb Hogan has been a teacher, dean, vice president, counselor, and historian. It was only fitting that Herb be chosen to write a centennial book, an accounting of Laverne's 100-year history. Yeah, it's uh, fascinating to cover the history of, uh, of a university for 100 years. The, the changes are just <laughs> stand out and uh, are, are very interesting. Uh, the one that I have used a few times is a catch-all and it doesn't uh, really talk about what the university is, but uh, the fact that the um, tuition for the first semester when the university opened in 1891 was $11. Lawrenceburg College building, of course, was located on the block where the Wilson Library now is and uh, near the Tasty Freeze facing south toward the Hannibalt House. And uh, obviously that indicates uh, that there's been a great deal of change on this campus. The early college was fascinating in itself because you had these people all moving out uh, from the east. They were not native of the area and uh, they had to live, uh, many of them lived in the hotel along with the students. Uh, there was quite a family atmosphere. Uh, there was uh, cooking together and doing dishes together in the early days. I've forgotten, I think it was about 75 students that, uh, when, they, when they started. The salaries were always uh, low and um, they, there were times, I guess, when they weren't sure they were going to be paid, although most of them apparently were during the early years. And then there were a couple of other periods of time when we went through similar uh, cycles. One of these was during the Depression years. And during the Depression years, uh, clearly faculty were not paid um, on a regular basis. Uh, they frequently missed uh, payrolls. Uh, several years, when faculty actually signed their contracts, they signed that uh, they would get uh, at least 60% of what they were signed, signing for. And near the end of the Depression, uh, faculty were accepting IOUs from students uh, who weren't able to pay their tuition, but owed tuition, and they owed this tuition then to individual faculty members, uh, quote, when and if they could ever collect it. We're at this exciting point in the history of the university where we're celebrating 100 years of the history of the institution, moving from an academy in essence to a college and then to a university. Uh, and yet I think uh, in order to have survived all of that uh, period of time, there are certain things that you look for in the faculty uh, which are uh, rather continuous throughout uh, all of those periods of change. I think we still are a small institution in many respects and I think People that come to Laverne need to like to be at the type of institution we are. I think it's fascinating to see that each president had his own style and in a sense his own goals and direction and, and he left his stamp on this institution. And you go clear back to W.C. Hannibal, one of the earliest ones. Um, you know, he took over at the time that the, the, the uh, college was closed and, and sort of rebuilt it and kept it going. And uh, he left a, a stamp even though he was only here for five years. The name of the, of the game at the University of Laverne is people, people relating to people. There's no other institution in the country with the same group of personalities that we have at this university, and that's what makes it special. And as a teaching institution, as an institution where the faculty members have to relate closely with the students, there's nothing more important than having high quality faculty members. We've got to move to that next plateau. We've done the easy part. Financially making the place more stable, improving our facilities. The most difficult part will be programs and services. I'm convinced we have the people who can help us move ahead with that. From my perspective, the faculty has, um, the academic stature of this faculty has improved considerably. As an illustration of uh, the expertise that um, some of the faculty have. You have a person like Bernard Eller who's published 20 books in the last 20 years. Um, I think that pretty well matches what anybody on any university campus does. You have a person here on campus by the name of Dr. Amadis Bahani in economics 
who spent uh, two years as economic advisor to the Central Bank of Iran, and then he spent four or five years as the liaison between the government of Iran and the Patel Laboratories in terms of doing stu a study on how to spend the five billion dollars a year they were getting in from their oil money to best improve the country. Uh, now that's outstanding expertise. Um, it, uh, Dr. John Jang um, is, is an expert on the Orient and before Richard Nixon went to um, China for the first time, uh, John was one of the ones who was called in by the, the State Department staff to prepare the way for Nixon to go. Uh, he was called in again before Reagan went. Um, you know, you can just go through um, a list of faculty. Ken Scamberry, who has uh, publications and uh, is writing book reviews. Um, and I think this is what reflects the caliber of an institution. As I see some of the younger faculty uh, around, and uh, Gary Colby is an illustration, his dedication is, is exactly the same dedication that you would have had back in the time of W.C. Hannibal. And, I, and Reed Gratz and some others, I'm sure. Uh, so there are some. Uh, I think it's it's a little more dispersed than it was. But one of the interesting things that we've found is that even in our far-flung residence center programs, off-campus programs, people have said, yes, there does seem to be an identity which goes with Laverne. The, the people who come to us from Laverne do seem to be more interested in personalized education and in individual people. So that, that's a carryover of this Laverne. Whatever Laverne is, that's a carryover of it, even out into this wider world where we have uh, 4,000 students. This is one of the 12 sites for the ULB Doctoral Program in Educational Management. This program is designed specifically for the practicing school administrator. Each cluster is team taught by a regular ULB faculty member and a practicing administrator. Pat Clark White, a highly regarded school superintendent, teaches for the Orange County Cluster. As I think of Pat Clark White, the one word that comes to my mind is uh, expertise. Her knowledge and, and reputation as a superintendent is, is one of the biggest things about Pat's leadership style that makes her very credible in working with us as, a, as students, and that's what I appreciate about her. Um, I think I'd use the word inspirational. Uh, Pat has been an inspiration to me personally, as well as other cluster members as far as being able to have us go just the next step and always encouraging us to be the very best that we can be um, at all times and uh, she displays that always with us. The thought that comes to mind was one evening at a cluster meeting when Pat made the comment that the greatest compliment of all is to be referred to as a coach. Um, Pat is a true example of a coach. She does a good job of supporting encouraging and providing the kind of modeling that's necessary for us as we become successes in the field of leadership. When I think about Pat Clark White, the word that comes to my mind is powerful. She's powerful in her ideas and the way she interacts with people. And she would like to, I believe, pass that power on to other people. She's, uh, she's a type of person who likes to share power with people but they have to be willing to grab a hold of it and run with the ideas they have. She doesn't accept mediocrity. The University of Laverne is preparing for the emerging student of the 90s, the full-time working professional seeking career advancement and professional growth. These are students of the doctoral program in public administration, a program designed for the practicing health care and public sector manager. An emphasis of the program is executive leadership. An outstanding model for the program is the department chair, Jack Meek. If you had to say, give me one word to describe Jack Meek, what might that word be? Lovable. <laughs> That's not a professional word, though, is it? Uh, very responsive. Responsive would be the word. Challenging. I can't do it in one word. I can't do anything in one word. <laughs> you asked for one word, but I would have to say focused, but at the same time flexible. 
One word I'd say would be dynamic. Uh, he's just that type of individual that blends himself with persistence and motivation to give a dynamic setting to all the students. This program has allowed me to see a whole uh, practical application of public administration and how it can fit into my world and how it can really work for me. And that's why I'm such an advocate for this program. Jack obviously has a participative, interactive type of relationship both with the instructors and with the students. Uh, that's evidenced by the changes that have occurred, I think, in, in the program. The intensive is not so much intense as it is, it's more enjoyable. I learned more in the last two than I did in the first one. Uh, I think Jack's approach is that it doesn't have to hurt to learn. And this is the way we feel about it now. I think it's great, absolutely great. At the end of each school year, undergraduate seniors retreat to the nearby mountains to reflect on their Laverne experience of friendships, joys, and sorrows. Inevitably, their reminiscing turns to the faculty and to the influence that that certain faculty member had had on their lives. And about Herb, I call him Herb. I only had Herb for one semester. That was American Democracy, and I thought I was going to fail that class, but I passed it with a very good grade. And I think he's just an excellent teacher. He remembers my name, even though I only had him for one class. <laughs> um, I think he's just great all around, and that he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's talking about. And he's just an amazing mind. He's full of, of information. And I'm really, I'm really happy that I got to, got to take a couple of his classes. I'd like to talk a little bit about Bob Fulmer. Um, he is, he's a psychology teacher here, and he has been really an inspiration to me. He's um, He's someone I can have respect for because he's done so much and he's experienced so much. And at the same time, um, he's got a real, real gentle and loving spirit. And um, those mixed together, it's just made him someone that I can really look up to and I've learned a lot from him. And um, he's always there to listen and um, kind of help you through a bad day. And um, just all around, he's been a real special person to me. And I think I've had a happy time in Laverne. And I'm so very glad I came. And not to get too emotional, my advisor, Dr. Jang, who's really held my hand through my major international relations. And I've kidded him about maybe one day being a diplomat and coming back here to the country, or maybe just becoming a tennis player. My freshman year, I took my first photography class with Gary Colby and just fell in love with the craft. And from that time on, he's taught me the fundamentals of the skill. He's nurtured me along and shown me better ways to do, to do the craft and my work. And he's taught me ethics. I don't know where I'd be at this point if it weren't for him. I mean, I'm going to go on and spend the rest of my life doing photojournalism and news photography and just bringing the images that he's taught me how to make to people so that they could share our world. Agnes Stress has taught me um, to take stands in issues and to go with my beliefs and follow up on them no matter what controversy I stir on campus or, or with other people. It's, it's a matter of, of knowing what you, what you want or what you foresee in, in a system or in, in a group of people or in a, an institution and making changes or voicing your opinion out. And she's, she's let me know that to voice it is more important than to remain silent. She's a professional, and with that comes all the elements of being a professional. She's ethical, um, very accurate, and a great teacher. I always wanted to work under her. And I'm glad I had a chance to. Unfortunately, it's just this one semester and I'm moving on, but she's someone I've uh, always respected and admired, and I know I'll be coming back to her in the future for advice and just to shoot the breeze. Um, 
She has a lot to offer the school and to other journalism and communication students on campus. And I've learned a lot from her, and I, I know she'll benefit a lot of other students. When I look back in the four years, we call her Agnes the Knife, Russ, because she's, she's there with her exacto knife, ready to cut any of your, your copy that you just write. And you think you developed this great masterpiece, and yet she'll cut 10 inches out of it. And, and I appreciate that, because she's learned, she's taught me to be concise, to be accurate, to, to go more in depth in stories, and, and to listen, I think. That was one of the greatest things Agnes taught me was to listen to other people. Thank you, Agnes. I'd also like to thank Bob Rivera for introducing me to forensics. I thank you for that, and I'll never forget Toastmasters 6 30 in the morning. And um, Dr. Espahani, I thank you for everything. And Rita, I thank you for our current relationship now and how you're, you know, you're helping me and you're being supportive. And um, I guess Steve Morgan for doing a good job. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you to, uh, in general, to all the uh, individual faculty members in the music department. Um, first, I'd like to talk about uh, Bruce Hirsch and uh, say uh, thanks for everything, Bruce. Thanks to Reed Grads for forgiving me, for screwing up for me, and for making Janet's class so wonderful. And to Marjorie Hirsch for all she's done over the past four years, because she has just been amazing. Beth Gershon, who came to ULV and really improved the marketing program. And she came to ULV to help people like me, females, because she got tired of the ignorance no matter what degree you had or no matter how much you knew if you were a female in the industry, they were really treating you bad and that there was a lot of uneducated people in marketing because marketing just came out big in the past 10 years. And so she's come and she's taught us how it should be, what we should know, and how we should treat each other. And I thank you guys for that one. I don't think um, there's anybody else who's as caring a professor here. Thank you, Beth. As students say their farewells, there are promises to keep in touch. In looking to the future, there is security in the feeling that the education they received at Laverne has value and that the friendships made will last. David Hollinger, class of 62, a noted history professor at the University of Michigan, recalls his mentor, Herb Hogan. Yeah, I think Herb is somebody who could have fit in a lot of places. I mean, his talent uh, was recognized by just about everybody that came into contact with him here, and I have no reason to doubt that that would have continued in other places. He was always very dedicated to the place, though, and in a way that was refreshingly unpretentious. Actually, in those days, there was um, a kind of cultural complacency about some people around Laverne, and Herb was refreshingly aloof from that. Uh, Herb was um, all the more commanding an example and a voice because of his own humility. And uh, I think that's something that would have been picked up just about anywhere. He's the sort of person that you want to welcome into any collegial community. As to why he stayed, he would be the best witness on that. The only perspective I would have from my experience here with him from 59 to 63 is that he was somebody that seemed to understand that one can make sometimes the best contributions in life by putting down strong roots in a particular community and trying to cultivate it and see good things grow there. And I believe that he just decided to invest his energies in Laverne and uh, make of it the best that he could. And in his case, I think it's worked out wonderfully, and the college is certainly a privilege to have him. Goodness. I thought that Herb was the most critically engaged intellectual on the Laverne campus during my time, and I'll always remember him for that. There are other stories, limitless testimonials as to the quality and value of the Laverne faculty. those who have not been acknowledged, whose standards of scholarship have passed the tests of time and excellence, thank you. Rita, thank you for your support, the time that you've given to me, um, all the breaks you've given to me through the, all my classes I've had with you. 
Thank you for just making me laugh in class. Thank you for making class so special. You are really special, lady, and keep the the power, the, the energy that you have in class up. That's what makes a class so special. It makes you so special.